and welcome back to episode 123 Talk Fame Podcast with their host, Kai Montigny. And I'm very excited to have on actress, host, and content creator, Sarah Priebus. Thanks so much for on, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you on. I'm, I am very excited to chat with you. And like you are the host of Trivia App HQ, which is Seriously, over the last couple of years, I've been obsessed with that game show on my phone. I always play that game. Like, what is like, your experience like hosting a big trivial game? Yeah, so, oh man, that's a complicated answer. But I will say, um, you know, it was never my goal to be a game show host. You know, I didn't necessarily grow up saying, oh, this is something that I want to do do when I saw like Alex Trebek or anything like that. Um, I was more always sort of focused on being an actor, Broadway actor. Like that was originally what I set out to do. Um, but, you know, I think one of the things that I've learned is I just really like to perform in different ways, tell, you know, stories in different ways. Um, and so it doesn't really matter to me as much what the medium is or what the style of performance is. Um, and also that you just really don't know where something might lead. So, you know, the way that I landed that, again, it wasn't like, <laughs> it was, I did not go into that, that thinking it was going to be a dream gig or um, that it was going to blow up in the way that it did. Mm -hmm. um, it was more so that I was pounding the pavement as an actor. Actually, when I applied for that job, I was hosting another show already. That was a daily show. That was my first salaried gig, which was amazing. So I was hosting a live show like five days a week. Um, and I had left bartending, which was my survival job for so many years mm -hmm. for the first time. And so I was still really hustling to make sure that like I had other opportunities and things coming in. And so I saw this opportunity to host this game show um, on casting networks and it honestly didn't even pay that much. I, I believe it was like $150 per show. <laughs> and so I was like, Oh, like I approached it and I think this has really helped me in my career. And I suggest to like other young actors or honestly anyone, um, that like you go about life sort of with this posture of curiosity and adventure. And you're like, okay, like, I don't know, like, what if this could be a fun opportunity, right? And sort of went into it with that mindset. And then weirdly enough, it ended up, you know, I booked the gig, I went in, I auditioned, I booked the gig when it was still in beta, it was, again, nothing, like there were 100 players, I believe, at the time. And then by chance, it just sort of happened to explode. And I, before I knew it, I was hosting the first million player game, and I had been there for a year and a half. And that became my new hosting job and got me, you know, the next set of opportunities, if you will. Mm -hmm. Like, did like did you know what HQ was before, like, you auditioned or you didn't know what exactly it was? Like, you said, like, when you auditioned, it was only, like, 100 people playing and stuff like that. Like, did you know what Yeah, HQ it was very... Sure. It, I mean, it was very pre... There wasn't an HQ trivia. Like, when I auditioned, it wasn't even necessarily... I don't even know if it had that name yet. Um, it was so early stages. I was brought on so early. So no, I mean, there was, it was, I don't even think they knew what they were at the time that I auditioned because my audition was, a, was total improv. Like I went in there and they just gave me a bunch of questions and I sort of had to wing an audition and they were like, oh, by the way, like you're going to be live for this and people are playing this game. So like, again, it wasn't even, and it's, polished form yet um so I don't think I could have really known what it was because I don't even think they really knew what it was yet yeah I know like when I play like there were like thousands of people playing like when I first started like there were it was kind of like mid blowing up like it's like after it started to become like kind of a little big but then like when you audition like was it like a big process where it took a couple of months or it was a kind of like a little snap process where it just took a couple of days Oh, it didn't even take a day. Um, so basically, um, I went in and the my audition was a live show. I had to, I was thrown into it. So they were like, this is your audition, but also you're hosting. <laughs> so, it was like a live whole thing. It was live. It was, a, it was, yep. Again, it was sort of like there were a hundred players. 
that were beta testing this app because they were still working out sort of what it was going to be and how it was going to go. And so they were still looking for hosts at the time, obviously, um, and trying to figure out like who they were going to have host this thing. So they're kind of like, this is what it is. Uh, the questions are going to, you know, pop up on the teleprompter and um, you'll be live for like 15 minutes. And I was like, okay, here we go. Uh, and that was my audition. And then, you know, they liked what I did and they're like, great, we're going to have you come back and do some more games. And at first it was, you know, not as frequent. And then before I knew it, I was sort of doing every single daytime game. Um, yeah. Like four to four to five shows a week, I would say. That's crazy. Like if for me, I'll be like, uh, like a live TV, like a live app, like made for my audition. Like how am I supposed to do that? Like I, if I were me, I'd be like, Oh, this is too much for me right now for an audition. I mean, it, you know, I think fortunately for me, again, like I said, I was sort of hosting a live show at the time already. And, you know, I, it's so, it's funny because I never really thought about it that way, but I, I believe that that totally helped prepare me for that situation because yeah, I probably would have been like, what the heck is happening? And I don't know if I can do this without, without having some sort of structure or script, um, but yeah, because I was sort of already improvising a show five days a week in front of a live audience on Facebook at the time, um, I it did feel a little bit less overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of like acting and some other things, like how did you like end up on an infomercial for Shiny Heine, which I know that's kind of how like you kind of started out and some things kind of was to say like way captions blew up I should probably say like how did you like end up on like shiny honey like for the information uh, very similar yeah I mean it's a great back-to-back question because I would say it was a very similar situation to how I landed HQ which is why I, I really do always encourage young actors to submit for everything mm-hmm. um, because truly you don't know where something's gonna lead and like I mentioned HQ wasn't even HQ yet they weren't even calling it that. Um, and it paid, I wasn't, I certainly wasn't doing it for the money. $150, um, you know, was, was pretty much, I mean, not that it wasn't anything, but you know, it was not like, that was certainly not the reason I was applying for that gig. I was just sort of open to an opportunity to try something new. Um, and similarly, when I saw the infomercial listing, which was on actors access, Um, again, I wasn't like thinking, I mean, I mean, pretty much I approached it the same way where I was like, oh, I've never done an infomercial. Um, I feel like every actor should have the experience of like doing an infomercial. So that might be fun. It also did not pay a lot. I mean, it was definitely $200. I think it was like $200, um, for a full day of work. Um, and you know, again, I also probably would not have submitted if I were aware of what it was actually for but because um they actually had a spelling mistake on the casting breakdown it was unclear and it it basically just said that it was an infomercial for a cleaning product um called the shinny hinny and like i just figured it was some sort of cleaning product called a shinny hinny um you know didn't put two and two together that like they had perhaps like misspelled the word shiny and the word hiney um and so when I got to set that day and it did end up being uh, basically a butt cleaning brush you know tried to get out of it and sort of was like persuaded to stay um and help out this production um and like help you know they were basically like uh if you don't do this we don't we don't have an actress And I felt bad and I was like, you know what? No one's ever going to find out about this. It's totally fine. I'll just like do the right thing and sort of be a worker among workers. Like I don't need to have an ego about this. Um, It particularly because they weren't doing anything like distasteful or that I felt really uncomfortable with. Um, And so, yeah. And, and then again, I, who could have predicted that this infomercial would be discovered by Ellen you know, months later mm-hmm. and lead to another opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like when like you found out it was 
like a much kind of different thing than you anticipated like what like were you kind of feeling like during that time like you're like oh like like you said like oh I don't want to do this like did you kind of expect it to be like oh this is gonna be the easiest kind of thing like it's just a cleaning product no one will ever find about find out about this in commercial is this gonna be like a small thing or did you kind of think like oh like everyone's gonna find this like this is gonna be I'm gonna be like a big kind of have a lot of people know me by the time this commercial is done oh my goodness definitely not the latter I mean it was my hope that no one would ever find out about it um yeah I mean I think I had all of those sort of like conversations going on like that internal dialogue in my brain um that was like should I do this it's not what I thought it was you know like you know I think as actors sometimes we can be put in situations um that you feel a lot of pressure to do mm-hmm. something that you don't necessarily want to do, whether that's an agent sending you a project and you feel like, oh, if I say no, they're going to be mad at me and then they're not going to send me other castings, you know, or um, this situation where I was like, again, it was, an, it just was sort of a bait and switch and I got there and it wasn't what I expected. And like, you know, I think part of it was like, I had already made the trek to New Jersey. And while like, that's not that far it was still like a solid hour and a half out of my way and I was already there and um the people that were putting together this production were very nice um and clearly very desperate and so I I, yeah I I I sort of was like who does see infomercials like really Mm -hmm. not that many people like I can't I you know they're like Oh, you like infomercials? Name five infomercials. I can't name like a single infomercial. So like Mm -hmm. in my head, I was like, nobody's going to find out about this. And that's the way I wanted it to be because I didn't want people to see that I was advertising this particular type of product um, just because I was kind of embarrassed. But now, honestly, it's really funny because again, it led to an incredible opportunity, but also I just like think of even like the, the friends episode where, you know, Joey gets into so many different types of scenarios mm-hmm. where he's like doing these ads that he doesn't necessarily want to do mm-hmm. um and I feel like it's like a token experience that almost uh you know and every actor almost should have I don't want to say every actor needs to be humiliated but I think we all have that humbling experience particularly in commercials where you're just you're, you're doing something ridiculous or you're advertising some sort of ridiculous product so I almost feel like now looking back, I'm like, okay, that was sort of a rite of passage. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And like, like you said before, a couple of months after filming the commercial, Ellen DeGeneres found the commercial and played it for Kristen Bell and Kate Hudson later on and asked you to be a guest on her show. Like, how were you kind of feeling that Ellen saw like your commercial and later asked you to be a guest on her show? Um, Well, I was very excited. Um very nervous um I think also in disbelief um you know shocked sort of like that that entire experience happened as it did like again I don't think in a million years I could have predicted that and again it's just such a good reminder because so often I think like I'm trying to control how I think my career is gonna go or like plan and like your brain can only really imagine like the small small Mm -hmm. amount for you and really it's so limitless and like there's just so much that could happen so um yeah no I was I was in shock I was very excited I was very nervous um but ultimately like it was like a thrilling experience Mm -hmm. like did you like watch like were you a fan of Ellen before like you basically came on like the on um, the her show like were you like a fan of her or you just kind of like oh this is an t- opportunity to be Ellen and go on to her show like a usual kind of press opportunity yeah I mean I think things have come out now that sort of paint her in a less favorable light and I like mm-hmm. honestly can't speak to um how she is as a person because truly my only interaction with her was being interviewed her being interviewed by her on air like Mm -hmm. I don't have any backstage stories to share as to whether she was nice or not nice to me um but at the time that I filmed this which was gosh now probably like six years ago um it was pre that so I think you know Ellen at the time was like 
yeah, like a sort of an almost like an American sweetheart or hero, mm -hmm. you know, like people like my mom, I mean, I watched Ellen, she was very funny. And she paved the way for, you know, a lot of types of people. And um, so yeah, I definitely looked up to her. It wasn't just like, oh, this is an opportunity to get ahead. It was like, it was, uh, it was more meaningful than that. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like, before like, the show ended like a year or two ago, I felt like like when the show was on, it was more on than for like at least 10 years. It was on for years. And I feel oh, yeah. like everyone has watched Ellen at least once or twice. For yeah. me, like I used to watch it like every single day. And yeah. then like when I found out Ellen had those allegations against her about her not being the best person, I'm like, ooh, like, is that really true? Like I first thought like, I learned that not as many people are nice as they seem like it at, on screen, mm -hmm. and, like live than they are like what, face to face. I learned, but then like you may never know, like things might actually be wrong. But then like it's kind of like surprising to see it. Sure, yeah. I mean, I think it's <laughs> it's always disappointing when someone doesn't match up to your expectation and of them, right? Um, I worked in the service industry for a very long time. And I would often serve people who uh, I admired um, on the screen and they were rude or they didn't tip or, you know, there's also the flip side where people were absolutely like incredible. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think it's quite jarring when that happens. And yeah, again, it's like, I can never, I can only speak to my personal experience and like, unfortunately or unfortunately, Unfortunately, I didn't really have it like as much as like I was interviewed by Ellen and had a personal mm -hmm. experience with her. I didn't have like a personal experience with her. Like it was all very much scripted, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I still cannot attest to whether <laughs> she is or is not a kind person. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, that's like the worst thing about kind of with things being scripted is that like you can't really actually have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation without it being live on television. Mm -hmm. so, you know what I mean like it's like you want to have like a personal conversation but at the end of the day like you're on, on television with that millions or thousands of people watching and it's like scripted like it's not it's a conversation but not like an actual conversation I should probably put it yeah exactly um and she's very good she's a very good interviewer um and performer so like on camera she was you know she made me feel at ease mm -hmm. and so like you are currently writing and developing a tv series like what can you basically tell us about the series if you like want to like people like what do you want people kind of expect from it I mean well hopefully it gets made at some point it's very difficult <laughs> yeah. to get a television show made <laughs> um mm -hmm. but I can say that I'm a huge proponent of people making their own work um, you know, I think when you are only sticking to getting cast by other people and their projects, you really limit yourself to other people's visions. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of times you won't get to play the characters that you want to play, or you don't get to necessarily tell the stories that you want to tell. Um, and so I think writing has given me the ability to do those things, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I get to tell a story that's important to me and I get to of course I wrote myself a character and so I would get to play that character which again is like a character that really excites me and that really resonates with me um and then in terms of the actual material um it's a dark comedy it's semi-autobiographical um and I did write it with a writing partner who has a shared experience with me and sort of that's what brought us together and we wrote a story about it. Um, so we're in the process, you know, we've written our pilot script and we have our deck and we're basically shopping it around and getting feedback. It's, I mean, this has been four years in the works. It has gone through many, many, many rewrites, some table reads. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just hope that at some point, you know, we've, we've tossed around the idea of making it into a feature so that we could just make the thing that we want to make. Mm -hmm. um, but we've gotten some really great feedback recently um, and some forward momentum. So we're actually 
going to continue with it as a pilot for now. That's amazing. I can't wait. I hope I'm really hope I can see it. Like things totally. I hope out. so too. I hope so too. You know, it's like you are a content creator. Like, why is it like it's creating your content on social media? Like, why like what is it like to create your own content on social media? Um, you know, my social media content creation has definitely evolved. Um I would say pre HQ, I was creating a lot of sketch comedy. Actually, let me back up even further. So pre that, I was hosting a show that I mentioned earlier. That was like my pre HQ show, right? The live mm. show. And I was getting very frustrated because that company refused to tag my social media handles. They wouldn't link it. And we were getting millions of views on these shows. And it was very frustrating to me. And I was talking to a friend of mine um, who had started to make his own content and was sort of dabbling in. I mean, he was a growing influencer. Now he has a thriving television career, which is crazy, but amazing. And, you know, I think he built that himself by making you, he would literally go around New York making fake seg. I mean, there were real segments, but like they weren't for anyone or uh, you know, there was no production company like sponsoring him to do this. And he would make segments like, you know, top five places to eat in New York. And he would shoot them and he would put them on his YouTube channel. And he was branding himself as this thing that he wanted to be. Um, and so I, and so I reached out to him because he was, I think at the time, already up to like 200,000 followers on Instagram. This is free TikTok days. Mm -hmm. um and I was like hey like I should be getting followers from the show that I'm doing they don't want to tag me like what do you suggest and he was like you know Sarah like if I go to your in if I go to your Instagram right now I don't even see like the the picture that you're putting out for everyone doesn't match what you're telling me that you want to be seen as it's you're putting out pictures you know of you with your boyfriend, you with your cat, like, it's just very, like, normal mm -hmm. girl content, right? And so why aren't you capitalizing on the fact that you're on a set every day, like, show more behind the scenes, you know, like, or show people that you want to act and write your own comedy sketches, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I started, it was such great advice. And it's like, oh, my gosh, yes, you have to show people how you and that it's kind of dangerous advice too, because it's like, okay, yes, you have to show people how you want them to perceive you, but it's like, you know, like the authentic you, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying you should show people something that's not real, but it's almost like you have to paint this picture. Like, I want you to see me as an actor and host. Okay. So how am I going to show you that I'm an actor and host? Mm -hmm. um, okay. So these are the different types of content that I can create. So I personally started with Yes, I was showing some behind the scenes stuff, but not really. My main angle was like, I started to film a lot of comedy sketches and I did a lot of sketch comedy. I would get together with friends. We would improvise sketches. We would shoot them and then edit them and put them on social. And I'm so grateful that I did that because I had a body of work on my Instagram that was like slowly getting me followers. And then when HQ happened and people were like, who is this girl? When they went back to my page, they saw that I was making these sketches and it gave them an additional reason to follow me. It wasn't just like, oh, this is just like a girl. This is just a girl. Like, we don't know. Like if I, if I had not taken that guy's advice, right? Like I kind of would just, they, they might've followed me because of HQ, but now I was giving them an additional incentive. Like, oh, if you follow me, like you get to see all these funny sketches that I'm making for you. So for mm -hmm. a long time that, that really worked for me. Um, but when the pandemic happened, I really burnt out. Um, I, I mean, I think it was just very difficult to make content, um, at, in the way that I was making it because it was with other people. Mm. Um, and obviously it was like unsafe to collaborate with others in person, um, during the pandemic. And then also I just was, um, I felt that I had to be funny all the time and I wasn't feeling very funny during the pandemic. There was also just like, I was, pull, I used to pull a lot of my material from like, my life and and there wasn't a lot happening and a lot to pull from and so as a result I just sort of was like I I just hit a wall in brainstorming ideas for content and wanting to shoot content um so I took some time off and then came back on um after hiring a coach actually 
for social media, which honestly was like one of the best things I could have done. And it's the same reason, like you hire an acting coach, right? You want to get better at doing something. And so you hire someone to help direct you to do that thing better, point out suggestions or whatever. And it might sound silly, but like that act changed my life because she sort of pointed out that I could open my content up to being about more than just comedy, right? Like I, I'm not a comedian all the time, right? So I can post, again, it was going back to like, okay, what's some behind the scenes? What are your trials and tribulations as an actor? What is it that you're seeing? And so when I sort of branched out to, to look at what was happening for me in the pandemic, it was like how frustrated I was with our the process of self-taping and that there weren't you know, just like every, I started talking about and making content around sort of like what was happening for me. And as a result, like I had an endless supply of content because it was just based on what was actually happening for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I had endless ideas and I could talk about things that weren't necessarily, I mean, that were kind of related to acting, but not necessarily like, you know, like mental health and you know, what I wear for others, like all they're just, it opened up so many doors, um, in, in wanting to create content. And I just sort of kept experimenting and exploring. And like, before I knew it, you know, I had a following that was following me for the actor life content um, and not for sketch comedy. And, you know, I'm so grateful because that following has given me the ability to um, basically have another stream of income, um, which makes it so I don't have to go back to, you know, a job in hospitality, for instance. Um, and, you know, now I have the skills to not only make content that I post on my page and can do brand deals for or whatever, but I also like there's a huge window of opportunity um, to be making content for brands that live on brands pages, right, or to direct content for brands. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's been a game changer for me because now it's like, I get to make mini, like for me acting, the reason I got into acting was because I, like I said, I like to, I like to play characters, but I also just like, like to tell stories and come, you know, come up with concepts and stuff like that. And I get to do that by making content. Mm -hmm. Like, how, like with being an actor and creating content, like how has content creation, like kind of help you shape as an actor? In, ter in terms of making content, in terms of mental health and all these things? Um, yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that it's just, it has helped me be a better actor because you start to understand um, a lot of the different aspects that go into filmmaking, let's say, right? Because you're now writing or directing or producing, um, editing. So like just the more that you can understand about the art of filmmaking, and I know you're like, some people might be like, oh, filmmaking, content creation, it's not the same thing. But you, yes, every mini video is a piece of, uh, you know, it's a piece, like a film is a piece of content and content can be a mini film. Like it just depends on how you look at it. So I think that's definitely one of the things that's um, helped me or in the ways that it's helped me. Um, I also think that like, it's just been very liberating. Um, for me, it's been an outlet so that when I do get frustrated in acting stuff, like I actually can just like make that, like, I think I was particularly in the pandemic and well now post pandemic with sort of all these self tapes, right. I was feeling like I was just doing, making so many self tapes and taking like hours of my time. And I was like, and only like 1% of it is leading anywhere. And it was enabling me to like repurpose all of those experiences and that content into like, I'm not saying put self tapes on social media because you should be careful with that. And there's a way, a right way, a wrong way to do it, which we don't need to get into. But it was, to, I could take my experience of doing that and, and turn that into its own piece of content that felt like it wasn't just that I was like shooting an hour of an audition or two hours of an audition for nothing. Now it's like, oh, cool. I captured what it was like to actually have to shoot an audition and what's that process like, and then take that and put it on TikTok, right? And actually say, hey, this, what's, this is what it's like to be an actor right now. Um, it, it takes that experience. And for me, it feels like it has an added sort of um, value, right? Than just like, okay, I'm auditioning for this film and it's probably not gonna go anywhere. No, now I'm auditioning for this film 
And yes, I get all the value of that process, but I can also just take that and tell and turn that into its own experience and piece of content. So it was sort of like adding like this multi-purpose quality to like everything that I was doing and help me form community. Like, I think one of the things that I love so much about social media is that like, now I, I have this community that I absolutely love of people who either want to learn about what it is that we do as actors um, and are so supportive and are like, wow, I had no idea how much work goes into this. And that, that feels very validating um, and, and again, supportive, but also just like other actors who are like, oh my gosh, yes, I feel you. I know what that's like. And it just like adds this extra layer of support. Yeah, and, like, with, like, quarantine, like, there was, like, most auditions were held on self-tape. Like, you couldn't go in-person auditions. Like, now, like, with, like, kind of, like, pre-pandemic, I should say, now, like, now, like, now in today's society, 2023, most auditions are on self-tape more than in-person auditions. And with content creation, like, people don't know that it can bring you more following and more opportunities. Like, I learned that, like, if I do reels or make content creation or anything that I do, it'll help me brand myself and show people that I not only just do podcasting, I, or I'm not just an activist or whatever you do or I do. It just shows you kind of like what you do in your life. You know, I mean, you see like, oh, get yes. people inside your life, not as as a host or I'm basically just a content creator. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's a very powerful tool. And listen, uh, sometimes it's exhausting. Sometimes you're like, I'm so fed up with social media. Um, but I think you have to look at it like anything else in this business, right? It's, mm -hmm. it is a tool. So do you want to use it or not? It's like, it's like how you would look at headshots. You're like, Oh, headshots. I don't want to make, I don't want to take more headshots. Okay. So don't take more headshots. You're mm -hmm. doing yourself a service. Like no one's going to force you to take headshots. No one's going to force you to be on social media. But like, if you can look at it curiously and be like, okay, how can I weave this into my career and make it work to my advantage? It's exactly like what you said. I mean, think about it these days when you look someone up, where do you go? You go to their Instagram, you go to their, like, you know, that's where you go. You go to social media. Now I'm not saying all the casting directors are doing that because I think there's a whole world of like TV and film auditions where they're not doing that at all. And same with commercials. Like it, it really depends, but sometimes they do. And sometimes even I'm seeing auditions where they're like, let us know if you have a following, do you, or must have a following of over 50,000. So like, mm -hmm. whereas it was never a thing before, I think it's becoming more essential that, um, yeah, you, you, you use it in a way that feels healthy for you. Mm -hmm, exactly. And I want, like, the last thing I wanted to ask you is like, what is basically some advice for like that people that want to be a content creator or want to be like a host of something like want to be a host of a podcast or a brand or whatever they want to do sure um well I would say do it and don't be afraid to fail um because you know it, it can be very daunting at first right you know you mm -hmm. start making videos and they're probably uh, it takes you a long time to make them or to figure out how to do this podcast or whatever it is. Um, and then you're like, eh, this is kind of subpar. It's like, I thought it was going to be better. It doesn't look as good or sound as good as I wanted it to. And maybe you put that thing on social media or wherever you're putting it and you're not getting that many downloads or that many views. Um, I would say, you know, don't be disheartened and, and sort of like look at your intention and try to find the fun in it. You know, I, I mean, I think it's, it's very easy advice to give, you know, don't validate yourself through, you know, the, the engagement or the views or whatever, but like at for you, it takes time. You have to be patient. Like, it's like an acting career. Like I did not build this career overnight. You know, I've been doing this for almost 20 years at this point. Um, and it's taken me a long time to get here. And I'm not saying it has to take that long either, but I'm saying patience is, is very important. And, um, you know, just don't be afraid to fail because it was through failing that I was able to realize the type of content that like felt the most authentic to me. And if I hadn't experimented with other types of content first and bombed, like I would not have found the thing that is best suited to me. Um, you know, and I think the other thing that I would say is like research, watch other people's content, uh, YouTube 
YouTube has so much knowledge. So like, you know, if you did want to start a podcast or, you know, you did want to like become a content creator. Um, I mean, you, TikTok is also like the new YouTube. You can find a lot of information there. You know, you could literally search um, for like how to be a content creator. Like it's the same idea, right? And watch other people's videos. People, there's so much content about how to be a content creator or how to be a host or, you know, I mean, at the top of my TikTok, I have a playlist called actor tips, right? And those are videos that are just like what I would do if I were just getting started and like 10 tips for actors who don't have an agent or how to get an agent, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. there's so much free content out there. So like, it's there. You don't need to like, while classes and all these coaches and all that stuff is great. And like, again, I'm a huge advocate of investing in your career. There's mm -hmm. also, you know, um, plenty of free education that you can get through the internet. Exactly. And like, I want to thank you so much for uh, coming on the podcast. I seriously love chatting with you and just keep up the amazing work. And I can't wait to see all that you do this year and what you do in the future. And just thank you so much for taking some time out of your day. Come on, give me so much. Oh, yeah. No, thank you again for having me. <laughs> I really of appreciate course. it. Thank you so much. And we'll definitely connect soon.